Papa Play Days 2020 Junior Ranger Richland logo. The little park ranger wearing a National Park Service uniform stands in a field of sagebrush in front of a very large museum and a large sculpture. Hello, it's Ranger Emily here with Manhattan Project National Historical Park. I'm going to go ahead and remove my mask so you can hear me better. Today I'm visiting the Reach Museum in Richland, Washington. For this week's pop-up Play Days video, we are learning about the art of the Manhattan Project. We are also going to talk about the art produced during World War II. Very often art reflects life and the world around us. World events, like wars, have huge impacts on art and artists. And we can learn a lot about the events like World War II by studying the art of the time. We use art to educate, inspire, entertain, and bring people together. Art was very important to the members of the Manhattan Project community because they were living in an isolated secret city. Art provided a way for people to pass the time and relieve their stress. Musicians, singers, and actors are artists who perform their art. An historical black and white photograph of musicians performing on a stage in front of a large group of Manhattan Project workers. A historical black and white photograph of a group of teenagers dancing in a cafeteria. A black and white photograph of four musicians playing stringed instruments. Project leaders hired swing bands, musicians, and different types of artists to perform for the Manhattan Project community. Dancing and music were some of the most popular pastimes at the Manhattan Project. People also played their own instruments and records at home. Song lyrics changed in some unexpected ways during World War II. Many songs before 1942 were about women waiting for men to return home from war. A historical black and white photograph of a line of female Manhattan Project workers exiting work with a fence and a sign and buildings behind them. Sign reads, Make CEW count. Continue to protect project information. During World War II, five million women joined the workforce to support the war effort. They began to work away from home for the first time, like the many women who worked for the Manhattan Project. Songwriters began to write songs about men waiting for women to return home from work. The reason the songs changed is because art evolves and changes with the time, just like people do. A historical black and white photograph of Glenn Miller holding a trombone over his shoulder while looking towards the camera. At the beginning of World War II, the Glenn Miller Band was the biggest musical group in the U.S. Glenn Miller's Chattanooga Choo Choo Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy was the number one hit song when the U.S. entered World War II. It was popular because it was catchy and the lyrics reflected what was happening in America at the time. Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy is about trains and soldiers. When a soldier joined the military during the war, he would most often travel by train to his destination. And Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy told that story. A black and white photograph of two men giving Glenn Miller a gold record award. The song sold a million records, making it America's first gold record. When the war began, Glenn Miller joined the military and created a new band to entertain the troops called the Army Air Force Band. Glenn Miller and other famous performers entertained the troops at home and abroad on USO tours. A historical black and white photograph of performer Martha Ray standing on a stage behind a microphone. A USO tour band accompanies Martha Ray on stage. United States Organization Tours, or USO Tours, sent performers to entertain the troops on military bases. Music was very important during World War II, but not more important than winning the war. Americans sacrificed their records for the war effort. Record manufacturers couldn't make as many records during the time of the Manhattan Project because they were made with shellac, which was a rationed material. The military needed shellac for making explosives. The manufacturer's solution was to break old records and use their materials for new recordings. They would then send soldiers the new records with new music. Black and white advertisement of a young woman talking into a megaphone with her foot on top of a cart of records. Text reads, any old records today, question mark? Any kind will do, says Betty Winford, star of CBS Joyce Jardis, along with 
every other radio star, Betty has joined the drive to collect millions of old records for our fighting men. Performers and record executives promoted scrapping records and called the program Records for Our Fighting Men. Americans played records at home, but the radio was the number one way people listened to music and the news. 90% of Americans owned a radio during the war. There was less than 7,000 televisions in America at the time. Movies were more popular than television during World War II, but radio was America's favorite form of entertainment. Instead of gathering around the television or computer like we do today, people during World War II gathered around the radio in the evening to listen to radio programs, music, and President Roosevelt's fireside chats. The radio played comedy programs and variety shows, dramas, and the news. Bob Hope was among the most famous artists and radio stars of the time. A historical black and white photograph of Bob Hope performing on a stage behind a microphone in front of a large group of soldiers sitting outside. He was known as a GI comedian because he performed on USO tours for American soldiers around the world. Hope was popular with soldiers because he talked about their lives and experiences. People also enjoyed drawing, painting, writing, and reading during their time at the Manhattan Project. Reading books was a very popular pastime during World War II. Books offered new ideas and ways to think about the world. People could escape their surroundings with a book and their imagination. A black and white photograph of a young girl and boy standing in front of a comic stand reading comic books. A young boy sits underneath an umbrella behind the comic stand. A sign sits in front of the comic stand and reads comic books five cents. Comic books were popular during the war for similar reasons as books. It also helped that comic books were cheap and told stories about American heroes and superheroes. Clothing and shoes are also considered forms of art. The clothing that clothing designers designed during World War II reflected the changing times. The new style of clothing was termed utility clothing because it was practical. The clothing was versatile and easily cleaned. A historical colored photograph of a woman wearing a blue jumpsuit and red headscarf rivets a sheet of metal. Jumpsuits became popular and mimicked the ones worn by factory workers and mechanics. Designers decorated clothing with patriotic symbols and colors. They designed clothing and hats to look like military uniforms. The government rationed cloth during the war, so designers created clothing that required less material. A black and white photograph of a young man wearing a zoot suit and hat. People began to criticize the famous zoot suit at the time for their extra material and the style began to lose its popularity. During World War II, the United States government worked with artists and companies to promote patriotic messages using art. The government commissioned artists to create posters, films, radio shows, books, and billboards to deliver patriotic messages to Americans. Some politicians and military leaders recognized how important artists are for preserving and sharing our history. The Army formed the War Department Art Committee in 1943. The committee selected 42 artists to send to war zones around the world. They sent writers, painters, photographers, and other types of artists to places like Alaska, North Africa, and the Pacific to document the war through their art. Quite a few of the artists served on the front line as soldiers while working for the War Art Department as artists. World War II produced some of America's most important art and artists. The soldiers and survivors of World War II also used art after the war to heal from their emotional and physical wounds. Today we use art from World War II to educate people about the war. Museums like the Reach Museum use art to educate Americans about history, nature, and culture. Thank you for joining me for today's Pop-Up Playdays video about art. This video is our last Pop-Up Playdays Ranger video for the year. Remember to complete and submit your Junior Ranger Passport so you can earn your Junior Ranger Patch or Pin. I hope you've enjoyed Pop-Up Playdays as much as we have at Richland Library, Richland Parks and Rec, and Manhattan Project National Historical Park. The National Park Service Arrowhead, Richland Parks and Rec logo, rolling credits, text reads, photos courtesy of Department of Energy, Library of Congress, National Park Service, Wikimedia Commons, 
Martha Ray entertaining troops during World War II, probably North Africa, circa 1943. John Atherton, https colon forward slash forward slash www.flickr.com forward slash photos forward slash 72105154 at n00 forward slash 38 